Hello everyone, my name is Ninoa and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 10. And after all the events of last time, we are going to have a quieter day today. Uh, we are going to mostly mop up side quests around the three city-states that are available. So there are a couple of pretty important features that we are going to unlock and we also need to complete the Beauty is Only Scalp Deep uh, side quest that has been open for a while here. But yeah, there is not going to be uh, any MSQ ongoing today, so no spoilers. That's a good thing. So MSQ I will resume in the next two videos where we will focus almost exclusively on it. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is check on my retainer. And as you can see, she has now in excess of 90,000 gil. That money comes from sales on the, on the market only over the last couple of days. And I haven't done anything special. I've just placed items uh, I've received through the quests that I didn't use or I crafted items but only from recipes level 1 to 5, 6. So nothing special really but as you can see here from the prices some of these items sell for thousands and sometimes well in excess of 10,000 gil. Obviously when you are at endgame level, uh, you can sell some items for hundreds of thousands of kills or even millions. Um, but for this early into the game, it's not too shabby. Given the state of the market, if you are interested in making gil very early on, it might pay off to actually go check on the market boards for easy items that you can craft and see at what at what price they sell at that given moment because you can spot gaps in the market for items that you can craft in a few seconds and that will sell for 20 40 thousand gills So what I am doing right now is that I am checking quickly uh, in my armory chests what other items are worth selling. And here nobody else is selling that item at the moment so I'm checking on the historical prices to set the price, which I'm typically going to set higher than the historical price, but not by too much. And with that, I am done. Just one last word about retainers. Um, you need to check on them at least once every seven days if memory serves, uh, but I need to confirm that. If you don't check on them for more than seven days, they stop selling on the market. But if you are actively selling, you will want to check more often in order uh, to adjust the price uh, to the market regularly. Okay, I also wanted to show you this quest, which I am not going to pick up. <laughs> but will be available from level 17 onwards. The house that Death built. This quest will allow you to unlock the first deep dungeon in the game. This deep dungeon is going to take you hours upon hours. It's very interesting. It's a great way to level up alternative jobs. Um, but I'm not going to do it now because I 
would rather focus on CMSQ until I complete a Realm Reborn. Also, it was only released uh, during the uh, Heavensward expansion. But know that this exists and if you want, you can explore it at your leisure. So remember I was talking to you about Venture last time when I ended the video and this is how you can unlock Ventures for your retainer by talking to the troubled adventurer in any of the city-states. So you'll find one in Limsalaminsa and in Ulda as well. You just need to talk to one of them to unlock the Ventures feature for your retainers. And again, as specified here, regardless of who you help in whatever city, the rewards are going to be exactly the same. Level 17. An ill-conceived venture. Something weighs heavily on the adventurer's mind. The rewards are 1560 points of experience, 418 gil and 6 ventures. She's never ignored a summon before. Beg your pardon, madame, but would you be willing to aid a fellow adventurer? It is about my retainer. She hasn't returned from her latest venture to nine EVs and I fear something terrible may have happened. I would track her down myself if I could, but I have an important appointment I must needs keep. Mayhap you could go and search in my stead? Okay, so 9 EVs is in the Eastern Shroud. So remember how to go there, as there have been a few side quests which have taken us there already, although the main story hasn't yet. And as you can see, there are a lot of enemies which have that target above their head, so which are needed for my hunting log. I'm picking one here, and I only need one Mandragora, as well as a trance. And what you need to know about the um, hunting log, both for Archer and Lancer, and also if I remember correctly for Conjurer, the second level, most enemies are going to be found here in the East Shroud. There are a few exceptions to that, but the vast majority are to be found here. So I'm clearing up a few entries now for my archer, but I will do the bulk of it when we return to the East Shroud for the main story quest a bit later on. Yes. 
and this place here with the yes right is nine EVs. And the retainer we are looking for is slightly to the east of here. Now, what you are seeing me do is adjust my hotbar because I've just unlocked a pretty important skill for Lancer, which is Disembowel. Disembowel, you will use it all the time because it's a weapon skill which once used grants you a 10% extra damage for 30 seconds so it's a buff you want to have on all the time but in order to gain that buff you will need to use disemboweled in combo with true thrust so now you have two combos to make the first one is going to be true thrust followed by disemboweled and once you have that buff on you will use true thrust and vorpal thrust repeatedly until the buff is about to run out in which case you will switch back to true thrust disemboweled to reapply it And that's the basic rotation at this level. And we finally found our retainer and we found some hungry buzzards as well. That's going to be easy to clear. Now let's talk to the retainer. Twelve, bless you, adventurer. So focused was I on my task that I took no notice of the buzzards at my back. You seem confused. Have you heard note of ventures? It is a service in which we retainers carry out procurement expeditions on behalf of our employers. Alas, some are not want to furnish us with sufficient equipment, despite the obvious benefits it, it would afford both parties. Has he been summoning me this entire time? Pray excuse me. Forgive me, master. I was waylaid by beasts. Yes, by your Huron Lancer. How did you know? Of course, as you wish. It seems I must take my leave at once, but before I go, pray allow me to thank you. I have note to recompense you with, but should you inform my supervisor, Parnell, of your deeds, I am confident she will see fit to reward you. May we meet again, my friend, and do not forget to visit Parnell in the Shaded Bower. Okay, and we are going to do the same. We are going to hit return. And let's go to the markets in order to talk to Parnell. Greetings, madam. 
I have been expecting you. The retainer you rescued was most effusive in her praise. Retainers are of course permitted to refuse a venture which they determine to be too dangerous. Alas, this particular young woman is new to the profession and was thus easily persuaded by her employer to accept. Beg your pardon? You would like to know more about ventures? Certainly, it would be my pleasure to explain. In cooperation with the Adventurers Guild, we have established a new system through which retainers may be dispatched to procure items for their employers. Should you wish to avail yourself of this additional service, you will need to pay a retainer in advance with ventures, script issued by the Adventurers Guild. Here, pray accept these complimentary ventures with my thanks. Bear in mind that most retainers lack the skill to carry out all but the most menial of tasks. Of course, as they grow more experienced, that will change. If this sounds daunting, let me assure you that it's simple in practice. Why not speak with your retainer and see what they think? Adventures are now available. Summon the retainer you wish to send a field and follow the instructions to begin. Okay, and let's test that out right away. And as it says here, before doing anything else, we must assign our retainers a class. The class will determine what kind of ventures they will go on. Your retainer can be assigned any one class with the exception of those of the Disciples of the Hand. While it is possible to reassign classes, please be warned that your retainer's progress in the current class will be reset. A retainer's class determines which ventures he or she may embark upon. Retainers gain in level by completing ventures, but their level will never exceed your own. So, as you can see, I can only assign a class I have unlocked for myself, which is fine, because really, ideally, you would want at least one retainer for each botanist, miner, fisher, and one of the disciples of war and magic, because that would cover all the types of ventures you could possibly assign to a retainer. Now, obviously, by default, you can only have two retainers. So you will have to make sacrifices unless you decide to spend real life money to acquire more retainers. But that's a decision only you can make for yourself. Okay, so I've decided to start with Botanist. And as was mentioned earlier, you can change classes for your retainer, but unlike you, they can only ever have one class assigned at any given time. So if you want to switch classes, you will have to start over again. And generally, that's not something I would recommend. So in order to assign them a class, we have to give them the level one weapon or tool corresponding to that class. And that's it. My retainer is now a botanist. But while giving her the main hand tool is enough to transform her into a botanist, you really want to gear up your retainers. Remember what happened in the quest earlier? So what I'm going to do before assigning her a venture is craft her some gear. So I'm going to check for gear level one that I can craft for her. 
and in the case of botanist that's going to be the hempen dalmatica of gathering or if you have one in your inventory you can also give her that obviously and i'll see you again once i'm done crafting and the hempen dalmatica of gathering is crafted so now I just need to equip it to my retainer. Note that you don't have to take that extra step before the first venture, but you want to equip your retainers regularly, just as you would for yourself. And we are going to look into the reason right away. Ventures are tasks which send retainers afield on procurement expeditions. Retainers can be instructed to either bring back specific items or explore certain terrains for whatever items may be found, be they riches or refuse. It should be noted that retainers well equipped for their journey may return with greater spoils. Assigning a venture requires a payment in a unique currency of the same name, ventures. Ventures can be acquired through a variety of methods, such as exchange company seals, fulfilling leave objectives and completing tribal quests. The only way for us to earn ventures right now is through leave quests, and you will need to look at leave quests for Disciples of War and Magic a level 15 or above. And even that's going to be limited, but I'm going to look into earning ventures in a couple of videos from now. Even while on a venture, Retainers will promptly answer your call when summoned, and likewise can be sent to tend to your wares at the market. Be certain to put these resourceful men and women to good use. And there is a note here telling you that if you were to cancel a venture for any reason, you will not recover the payment for it. Here, as you can see, we have two categories. Botany will send the retainer to get a specific item. And then there are explorations. One of two main venture types, exploration sends your retainer to scout the terrain of your choosing for, hopefully, precious items. There is no telling what he or she will find. Indeed, there are certain rare items which can only be obtained through ventures, so make a point of dispatching your retainer as often as your resources allow. Now, this isn't quite true because for each exploration, now we only have one level, but for each level, they will really get you rewards from a pool of possible items. It, it's not completely random. But for now, I'm just going to send them on one regular venture for a specific type of items. I'm going to send her for lightning shards as I have fewer of those and I don't need the latex because I still have enough for now. So these regular item focused ventures last one hour so they will return after one hour with the items you've sent them to procure and if you go under the main menu in the second column at the bottom you have a timer entry and there you can check how much time before your retainer returns for the venture and you can also see it here if you call upon your retainer you will see next to the venture entry when the venture ends. So while 
the venture I've sent her on right now lasts for an hour. Here you can see 58 minutes remaining. Woodland explorations, well, any type of exploration venture lasts for 18 hours. And then we will have a third type of ventures, which we will unlock when the retainer reaches level 10, which also lasts an hour. And in that case, the items you will receive will be truly random, but we will have the time to look into that when we get to that point. Okay, now, as you can see, I've made a detour to visit the delivery Moogle in order to pick up a couple of items. What I've just taken here is the Songbird Attire, which is a full set of gear that I obtained from the online shop, so I had to pay it with real life money. And now I'm looking for another set, this one, which, well, if you know anything about Final Fantasy VIII, you will be familiar with. <laughs> um, but I've received this because I've been a subscriber for a number of weeks. So you get that for free, uh, but you have to be uh, a subscriber for less than a year, but quite a significant number of weeks before you can receive it. And it's distributed to all your characters automatically, by the way. Now why I am taking this and bought the Songbird attire now will make sense once we get to the Gold Saucer. Also, I'm going to delete the letter in order to make just a little bit of space for, for any future purchase. Now, I'm not going to stay at the gold saucer right now. We're going to head to Ulda first. But we'll return by the end of this video. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm looking for it. Yeah, pick up this quest here from Pmolmin. Level 14. Help me, Lord of the Dance. When Pmolmin approaches, beware, for the impetuous Mikote always leads a merry dance. The rewards are 1035 points of experience and the ball dance emote. Psst, you there. Yes, darling, you. They say you're the last with a brass. Well, they call me that too, but for a different reason. Name's Molmin, and I earn my keep as a dancing girl in these markets. Aye, it's a living, and a good one. But it's not exactly what I set out to be when I bid farewell to the mudflats. I know, I know. Isn't that the way the tail curls? Still, I should like to be one of those dancers, Dexter. You know. The sort they engage for the ground balls. Hmm. To be a dancer of craft, not mere wiles. And keep company in high society. Course I'd have to learn a proper sort of dancing, less she me more stately. And that's where you come in, darling, because I've got a quarry for you to track down. They say a dancing master named Guillaume is in town. All the highborn ladies are a flutter wanting to take lessons with him. He's the best, that's the word. This is my chance to be something finer than Minnie the Minx. Go to the steps of Thal and ask around about him, won't you?
if you want. Well, you never know. Master Giono? Oh, it's lovely what he teaches. But straight is the gate, my good lady. He's very choosy about whom he teaches. You must dance for him and show some innate quality. Why, he would not even accept Master Gegeruju's diamond-crusted crumpet, and she was quite the danseuse already. A crumpet. It's been a while since I last heard that word. Sosota. Oh, of course I know where Master Giono is. Don't you see these roses on my cheeks? And the ever so slight droop in my supple carriage? I've just come from practice. You can stop wondering who the belle of the ball is to be next moon. With what Master Giono taught me, I've no doubt that I'll dazzle the masses. Why can you find him? Well, I ought not say, but... Oh, why not? You should find him under Hurstings Strip. He said he was headed to the airship landing. And so I need to find a set of stairs. Here we go. To the Hustings Strip. Are you another one of Master Giono's camp followers? So cute. You know he's from Curtas, don't you? Travels the world, teaching the art of the dance. They say he was the youngest dancing master ever to leap the lands, that he had a large estate, a fine stable, and a coat of crown sable. Why anyone would leave all that is beyond me. When I think about that, it gives me shivers, you know? Why, if he weren't leaving Ulda today, I'd consider permitting him the pleasure of my person. Oh, don't look so shocked. Mayhap when he returns. Yeah, the only thing that shocks me is that you mock his followers, but <laughs> you're even worse. Looks like we found him. Looks like each guardian high society, all right. Master Giono, I am he. That you are an adventurer is apparent, but what business brings an adventurer to a dancing master, I wonder? At that, you will not answer where no question has been asked. It is a feat that must persuade, not the tongue. Now, dance for me. Which cannot possibly end well. So you cannot use one of the uh, new dances that you've learned if you've done the other quests before. You need to use a slash dance emote. Thankfully, they are not showing it. The vessel is rude, but the wine within may yet be fine. That's a nice way to put it. Unfortunately, there is much call on my time, and I am bound for another land. I will make a dancer of you when next I return to this city. There you are! Heard anything good? Hope you're not wasting time with that looker there. Uh-oh. You know that looker? Yeah. 
She must feel so alone in this moment. <laughs> oh, oh, Master Giono, I am Pmolmin, the danseuse, and I would speak with you. It is my greatest desire to become a dancer, Dexter, and perform at the ground ball. Please, my lord, won't you teach me? So it is not the adventurer who wishes to trade the parquet, but his stammering maiden. Child, I sift people to find dancers. Do you understand? Then let us see whether you can master these steps. That's how they do it in high society, huh? I can be the last with class. Just watch. Hideous. Grotesque. Your dancing stands alongside the calamity in its horror. Well, that sounds a bit harsh. Well, those words might call your highborn ladies, Master Giono, but where I come from, we take our lumps and keep on twirling. Now, what exactly did you not like? She takes it remarkably well, to be fair. Child, you rely over much on appearances. You go from pose to pose, pleasing to pleasing. That is not dance, but crude fascination. Adventurer, look sharp and take your turn on the floor. What? Ah. <sighs> I can't take my eyes off of you. I mean, you're not exactly good. You'd be picking rotten orange pieces out of your eyebrows if you did that at the market, but... It, it, it's a story, isn't it? A dance is a story, and I have nothing to say. Because I haven't lived. I just made a living. Aye, child. Ale glazed eyes are easy to please, and you have squandered these years striking your poses when you could have learned a craft. Still, you have courage. I'll warrant that. I worry of teaching so many who may have lived, but in ways too alike. I wonder if you have courage enough. Do you dare start anew? To be a dancing girl no longer? To learn a true craft? I... I... I dare! I will learn the craft of adventuring! Well, that's an unexpected development. Do you adventure for fun or gain? Do you have to be very good with weapons? Well, no, not if you like me. The moves you make with your arms, is that some fighty thing? I want what you've got, darling. The way to the ground ball is through quests and dungeons. I'll learn to slug, I'll learn to slug, and I'll learn to dance. Uh, thank you, my lady, thank you. I'm off to the Adventurer's Guild. You've taught me so much, and I'll never forget that dance you showed me. Yes, same. Did you choose a mere adventurer over me, master among masters? Yeah, what seems like it. My airship departs this strange city soon. Dance your rude yet puissant dance, adventurer. Mayhap you will affect more aspirants as you did Molmin. At May Hype, I shall hang my dancing shoes and start anew. Well, he took it fairly well. 
I mean, nobody expected that. And so the last of the city-state dancers is in the bag. It's probably my favorite, but then I've always been partial to um, ancient court, ancient European court dancing. Yeah, I was about to head back down, but in fact what I really need to do is go to the Alchemist Guild while I'm here. I still can't get over the snow in Ulda. <laughs> You've come on behalf of John Delane? Why? I just furnished him with a fresh batch of my special creation last week. I realize the man's services are in demand, but it would be physically impossible for him to exhaust the entire supply so soon. Stolen, you say? An unfortunate turn of events indeed, if not entirely unexpected. You see, the man is something of a genius, and genius is often misunderstood by modest minds. Trust me, as I speak from extensive personal experience. You don't say. Yes, great minds must bound together in trying times, lest the realm be deprived of our talents. And so I command you, deliver this parcel to Gendelaine with all speed. I actually like the fact that of all three, he is the one we the most lenient towards Jandalain and the most understanding. Severin is a very surprising man, as you'll see over the course of the Alchemist's uh, class quest. Okay, so I was heading to the gold saucer, but I actually changed my mind and went to Limsalumina instead. That way we can complete the uh, Beauty is on a Scalp Deep quest right away. And for that we need to return to the Droning Wench. Because remember the quest stands just outside. If there is a nonce of compassion in you, friend, I beg of you, retrieve for me the tools of my trade, for I am none other than Gendelaine, the es... <coughs> the es... <coughs> ah. And so we just need to hand over the packages from Nanza, Bitin and Severian. Could this be? Yes, I can feel the light return to my eyes. Power courses through my fingers. I... I leave. And as I leave, this unspeakable embodiment of ugliness must die. Be gone, foul demon. I was about to ask who he's talking to, but she's not a demon. A 
And so I ask, how do you feel, madam? Why, it's as if, but in a single magnificent moment, I travelled beyond the void and returned to life as the embodiment of all that is beautiful in this world. Well, she looks different, I'll give her that. Could it be? Yes, it must. How else to explain such power? You are the one whose coming was foretold. You, yes you, are the esthetician. In the flesh, madam, I am Jandalane, crafter of coiffures so divine that Menfina herself doth begrudge my clientele their beauty. But let us speak of you, madam, for where a moment ago a fashion challenged Frump, now here stands a beauty reborn. What now? Oh no, don't you dare look at me like that. And you are the one I must thank for reviving my soul that I might once again bestow my gifts on a realm bereft of beauty, a kindness I intend to repay in full. Keep your tools away from me, would you? Do you fear that your own hairstyle is becoming passé? Fear the specter of ugliness threatening to consume you? Fear not, friend, for it shall not survive my wrath. Well, at least I look the same. As a madame before you, as this very realm we call home, from an abyss of unfathomable drabness, you shall rise anew. My clients have been known to make reservations moons even years in advance, but you shall know no such troubles. No, for proving a staunch ally to good taste when all others turned a blind eye, I gladly place myself at your beck and call. Yes, so next time you find yourself plagued by aesthetic ennui, you need only ring the crystal bell from the comfort of any in-room at which you have taken up lodgings. Jandalane shall hasten to the scene. Yes, in a flash the dreary, uninspired life you have hitherto known shall end. You shall travel to the realm beyond and return to us as a beauty reborn. I give you this as a token of the trust between us. Treasure it, for it is a key to a world of aesthetic wonders ordinary woman shall never know. <laughs> oh, Master John Delane, do come back. I've not made my next appointment. Hurry up. <laughs> I've seen this before. It never fails to amuse me. <laughs> I love this quest. So, yeah, the John Delane token basically is... A token for one free visit with the esthetician so you will be able to change your hairstyle or your face paint for free once with that token otherwise it's 2000 gil so not excessive anyways you have befriended gentle Lane. by using the crystal bell found in your in room you can call upon the services of the flamboyant esthetician from hairstyle and color to face paint, he can create a new look for you for a mere 2000 gil. Whenever you feel like a change, Jandalane is your man. Alright, so we have unlocked the esthetician. There is another feature related to appearance 
I would like to unlock, well, a couple, actually. But for that, we need to head to Vespa Bay. Remember, we had um, a handful of blue quests waiting there. And I'm going to look into one or two. Now, obviously to travel to Vespa Bay, we always have the Etherite tickets. But I'm not going to uh, waste them right now. Another option is to travel to Ulda first and then head to Vespa Bay. But there is another way to travel there that is going to be much faster and not as expensive as an airship. For that, we need to head to the Arcanist's Guild. And remember how we can take a ship at Fisherman's Bottom to go to a number of locations within uh, Lanosia? You also have another ferry that departs from just after the Arcanist's Guild. Now this place you'll get familiar with if you ever start doing some ocean fishing because this is a place from which the ships depart. But I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm going to return and talk to the ticketer. And as you can see, you can travel from Limsalaminsa directly to Vespa Bay. So that might be, depending on the circumstances, the most convenient way to go to Vespa Bay. Outside of Etherite tickets, obviously. But you only have a limited amount of those. Now, obviously, it would have been even faster if I hadn't watched the cutscene with the ship departing and arriving, and you can turn that off here under Character Configuration, General Cutscene Skipping. I'm not going to do that now, but know that you can skip playback of previously viewed transportation cutscenes. Okay, so, Vespa Bay. We have Nedric Ironheart here, who has a couple of quests, but as you can see, they are for characters well above level 30. So I'm going to ignore it right now. However, he will have a quest far closer to our current level once we push past a certain point in the storyline. So we'll return pretty soon, actually. I'm going to co talk to the Chocobo Keep to unlock. Unfortunately, there is no Aether right to unlock, again. But we have this blue quest here waiting for us. From Swergheim. Well, two, actually. Level 15. Color your world. Swergheim wants to show you a whole new world of colors. The rewards are 1,440 points of experience, rose pink dyes, bone white dyes and ice blue dyes, as well as the dye action. You there. 
Yes, you, the decisively unfashionable adventurer. Oi! God be good, never in my life had I seen such unapologetic focus on function at extreme cost of form. The mere sight of you fair makes my eyes bleed. There are few things to be said about your choice of colours. As a lover of all things aesthetically pleasing, I cannot in good conscience allow you to continue roaming the realm in that sorry state. I believe your appearance can yet be salvaged through the use of colour. I will teach you how to go about dyeing your outfit, but first I must have a drink. The heat has given me a vicious dust and I won't be able to talk for any length of time. Be a dear and buy me a bottle of orange juice at the stall by the northern gates, would you? Once I have moistened my throat, we shall see to the business of remedying your appearance. So you can do two things. You can either buy an orange juice, and I'm going to show you where exactly, or you can craft it. So you have to talk to that merchant to buy the orange juice. Well, you can buy it at a number of stalls, but this is the closest one. Or, as I said, you can craft it. For that, you need to switch to culinarian. You don't need to be very high level. It's a level seven recipe, as you can see. You just need to have gathered or bought oranges from Nanoshia. You can gather them in Lower Nanoshia, by the way. Pray tell, have you brought my orange juice? Lest you have forgotten, the merchant who sells it can be found just inside the northern gates. Phew! That's a relief. Finally, I can teach you how to bring color into your life. Listen well. There are handy items called colorants, which allow folk to dye their outfits a veritable rainbow of colors. These colorants are so simple to use, adventurers have no excuse to be fashion unconscious. Lest you worry that dyeing will affect your garment's precious properties, you may rest assured it will not. The practicality you adventurers love so much will not suffer for the change in appearance. A change for the better. It should also gladden you to know that garments can be dyed repeatedly so there is no fear of getting locked into one color. The garish pink that seemed like such a wonderful idea after a dozen glasses of red can't be undone. And that is all you need to know about dyeing gear. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and bring some color into your life. And obviously we have a little tutorial about that. You are now able to dye items. To dye a piece of gear, you must first have the proper colorant. Colorant can be crafted or purchased in stores. Once you have the proper colorant, dyeing an item is as easy as selecting the dye icon from the actions on traits interface. There is no limit to how many times an item can be dyed. Dye can also be removed by using an item called terabins. It should be noted, however, that certain items require the completion of quests before they can be dyed. If you wish to paint a housing fixture or furnishing, you can do so by selecting Furnishing Color by accessing Housing within the Social menu. Alternatively, Furnishing can also be painted when selected from the inventory. I want to show you how that works, but I cannot with my current gear because you cannot color it. The way I know that is because any item you can dye has this little circle in the upper right corner, but I can color this body piece. So I right click on it, choose dye, and it opens up this window where I can see a preview with any color available in the game, which is pretty neat including those I don't have on me yet. I do, however, 
have that rose color. Choose die, and here you are. Just a quick note on dies. Most of the dies you can preview are not available to you at this stage, uh, but I will tell you how to access them uh, as soon as we can get a hand on them. Level 15. If I had a glamour. Swergeim wishes to impart to you her knowledge of glamours. Oh dear, 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 this will never do. My sense of aesthetics simply won't allow it. How can you God dress like that? My dear, if only you'd spare a thought for style and coordination. I hope your garb holds up during a scuffle, because there's little else going for it. You are one to talk? That's it, I've made up my mind. From this day forth, I'll take it upon myself to save you from any more fashion disasters. Let me see. So much that needs to be addressed. Where to even begin? Be a dear and get me a drink. I'm feeling rather parched and this is a matter best discussed over a glass of something cold. Just go to the pist paste and ask Falklind. I'll have some blood orange juice and tell her to make sure there is no pulp in it. Now, off you go. You look awfully sober. Might be we can fix that. No, I'm a teetotaler, so that's not going to work. Oh, Swergame sent you, did she? That woman. I've never known anyone so lazy. Would it kill her to come and get it herself? Here you are. You shouldn't let her push you around, you know. Give her an ilm and she'll take a mulm. This one you can't craft to yourself, by the way. You have to buy it as a, as a piece to paste. So how's that drink coming along? Blood oranges can only be grown in certain climates, making them highly sought after. Oh, delicious! Nothing better on a hot day. Some say I have expensive tastes, but life is too short to settle for second best. Of course, this extends to my choice of wardrobe too. Now that I'm feeling refreshed, shall we get started? Do you know, dear, you'd look a lot less drab if you knew how to apply glamours. What's a glamour, you ask? Well, they use a glamour prism as a catalyst to project the image of one item onto another. It's just an illusion, mind, but very convincing. This means the original object stays essentially the same. It just takes on a new appearance, that's all. Remember, if you fancy a change, you don't have to stick with the same glamour. Just apply another one on top or use a glamour dispeller to return the object to normal. Why sacrifice style for such humdrum trifles as durability and protection from bodily harm? Limitless possibilities for self-expression are just a couple of glamours away. Go ahead, give it a try. And do make it quick, dear, for my sake. I finding your uninspired attire more and more offensive with each passing moment. So, although she is insulting us, essentially, she's also giving us 12 glamour prisms, a green beret, which is a headgear used almost exclusively for glamour, the cast glamour ability and the access to glamour plates. And this is how you gain access to the real endgame. Glamours. Glamours dressers in in rooms are now available. You may use dressers to transform items into glamours and create ensembles for quick and easy use. So obviously a couple of tutorials have just popped out. 
Lemurs allow you to alter the appearance of equipment through the use of illusory magics. To change the appearance of an item, highlight it and select Cast Glamour from the subcommands. Casting glamours requires catalysts known as glamour prisms. Please note that for the illusion to take effect, the projected gear must be compatible with a glamoured gear's level, class, race and gender. Glamoured items cannot be sold or traded. Furthermore, the item lending its likeness will become bound to you. With these conditions in mind, by using glamours, you can always look and perform your best. And now we are going to have a look at the Glamour Dressers tutorial. Is your inventory cluttered with gear you only wear on special occasions? Are Glamour Prisms causing you headaches? Glamour Dressers have been added to in-rooms across the realm to make applying and managing Glamour gear simpler and more intuitive. Start by adding gear to any Glamour Dresser where it is instantly transformed into a Glamour. Next, use Glamour plates to create full sets of glamoured attire which can be applied to your character or at once. So right away I can show you how to cast a glamour individually. You right click on the gear you want to change the appearance of. That will bring up that window where you can choose the item you want to borrow the appearance of. So for instance, the songbird jacket. Select it, choose cast, and I will use up one of the glamour prisms I have received. And as you can see, I am still wearing uh, the same brand new tabard, but it has now taken the appearance of the songbird jacket. Now, I'm not going to keep it like that for very long. I'm going to show you how to remove a glamour shortly. But before that, as you can see, Swigheim has another quest for us. Absolutely glamorous, which requires a disciple of the hand level 15. And as luck would have it, I have one of my crafters at level 15, my weaver. So let's switch and talk to Svergeim. Level 15, absolutely glamorous. Svergeim wants you to learn how to craft glamour prisms. And the reward is a clear prism. Thanks to yours truly, you have a basic understanding of glamours, yes? I also understand you are no stranger to crafting this and that by yourself. It so happens these skills can be applied to a singular cause. Would you be interested in helping to bring more glamour to the world? By that I mean learning to make glamour prisms, either for personal use or to aid the aesthetically underprivileged. I will explain everything in due course, but there is something I need to prepare beforehand. Bring me some Orthardian orange juice in the meantime, would you? Just ask Falkland, same as last time. Well, staring at me isn't going to get that orange juice poured any quicker. Hurry up, would you? Ah, Swergeim and orange juice, a love story. Swergeim still got you running errands then? And she wants Orthardian orange juice this time? Twelve preserve! Well, here it is. I think she and I need to have a little chat about her tab. This order alone costs more than some of our big drinking regulars spend in a whole night. Well, I hope it tastes good at least. You have my drink, I take it? Astronomical prices are charged for Orthardian oranges, although only a true connoisseur could tell the difference from those grown in Eorzea. As is often the case. Now that's what I call orange juice. Eastern oranges have a bitter kick that truly invigorates the soul. All that jumping around almost made it go down the wrong way. Anyway, before we begin, I have a confession to make. To be perfectly frank, 
My expensive tastes in orange juice have to be paid for somehow. While my intentions are sincere, my reasons for helping you are not entirely altruistic. Pass this letter to Gobarin the merchant and he'll allow you to browse his glamour prism received domes. If you buy any of them, he'll give me a cut of the profits. You'll have the knowledge you seek and I'll have money for orange juice. What could be more piquant? I will also send word to my associate Viscard in Revenant Stall. We have a similar arrangement and I'm sure you'll find his prices just as fair as Gobarin's. You should start with Gobarin though, since his stall is right there, by the Beast Paster. Once you've read one of those books, you'll be able to make the prisms yourself and share the glory of glamours with the masses. So Gobarin is over there, next to the ferry terminal. Ah, I sense you come in pursuit of true elegance. Is that a letter of introduction picking from your pocket? May I see it? A letter of introduction from Swirgeim, written while she waited for her orange juice to be poured. Of course. Ah, so you are Swirgeim's protégé, and you wish to produce grammar prisms? A noble endeavor. My selection of tomes, reserved for only the most deserving, are yours to peruse. So we get the clear prism. And in order to craft a glamour prism, you will need a clear prism and another item which depends on the crafter you're using to craft the glamour prisms. Any of them can craft them, except for culinarian. But what item you require with the clear prism will depend on the crafter. It will require one of their own recipes. Now, there is something else I want to buy while I'm here. He has a series of items called the Emperor's New and then the corresponding part of your attire. Now, I'll show you later what it is used for. I'm also going to buy a Glamour Dispeller and I'm going to show you also very quickly how that works. But before that, this is what we came for in this quest, the Master Tomes. And remember I told you when we talked about access to recipes very early on when I unlocked my first crafters, how we would need to buy tomes in order to learn some of the recipes that not all of them were unlocked just by leveling up. Well, those master insert crafter name glamorous tomes are one example of that. You have obtained a master recipe book. To learn the advanced recipes contained within, simply use a book in your inventory. The recipes will then appear under the master category of your crafting log. Now I'm quickly going to use the dispeller. So return to cast glamour and now I select remove. So that's done, and now I'm going to switch back to Weaver to show you exactly how tomes work. So by default the log displays the list of level-based recipes. So that's the recipes we regularly unlock by leveling up. And as you can see here we have an additional tab. If you noticed earlier in the others we only had two, here we have three. The second one includes furnishing and tribal quest recipes. I haven't looked into that yet but basically our recipes are already visible but you can only craft them once you've reached the right level. Also the tribal quests require specific circumstances to craft and we'll look into all that in 
time. And then that third tab is the one for tomes recipes or master recipes as they are usually known. So I'm going to use the tome I've just bought. And now if I return to the crafting log, you can see that the recipe for Glamour Prism is here. So as I said earlier, you'll need a clear prism and a couple of undyed velveteen. It's a level 23 recipe. So although we can already buy the books, well, the tomes rather, uh, it is still not possible for us to craft them. We will need to level up still a little bit more in order to be able to craft uh, the required items to then create those glamour prisms. But it's good to have the recipe available anyways. And if you look at the top, you also see that we are not using elemental shards, but rather elemental crystals. And those we will only obtain from around level 25 upwards because you need to gather them from level 30 gathering spots or there will be other ways to um, to obtain crystals um, but that will require to reach level 30 roughly you also have clusters but those are at an even higher level so we'll talk about that when we reach that point Anyways, I'm going to switch back to Lancer and I'll be heading to Ulda because now I want to travel back to the Gold Saucer, finally. Right, and now that we are here, I'm going to look for a blue quest here at Entrance Square, which is at the back. Here we go. So, Lewana is the person you want to talk to to unlock Mahjong, but also Fashion Report. Level 15, a passion for fashion. Lewena is frustrated with a new challenge and needs to unburden herself. The rewards are 1440 points of experience and 104 gil. Addressed precisely as I was told, to receive such a dreadful score that to mention the humiliating criticism. <laughs> you wish to know what's bothering me? That is well, for I wish to unburden myself. I have been having a frustrating time with a fashion report, the challenge they recently introduced. Yes, I, who can play any game here blindfolded and spin around, struggle with it. To be fair to myself though, it has a subjective element. If you have a mind for fashion, perhaps you would like to try your hand at the challenge. Go to Wonder Square and seek out masked rose, but we won't. The barbs on that man's tongue have barbs on their tongues. That's the first time I hear that expression. <laughs> and I believe it is at Wonder Square East or not. Yes, that was correct. It's funny, it's almost as if I had already seen that man somewhere. 
Oh, a new challenger has come to put her stylistic sensibilities to the test. Welcome to the fashion report, good madam. What, is everything quite alright? Is that you, Redolent Rose? Nah, let's go with the other one. Yes, everything is rosy. Redolently so. E excellent! Full glad am I to hear it. Now then, I believe this is your first time participating in the fashion report. Allow me to explain the concept and the rules. Fashion is a form of self-expression. What we wear without is a reflection of who we are within. Be it a conscious effort or no, this choice brings our individuality to the fore. Some folk are drawn to vibrant colors. Others may favor a loose fit for comfort. And while it is well and good to dress to one's preferences, a man cannot prefer that which he doesn't know. The world of fashion is vast and at times daunting. But if we have the courage to take a step into the unknown, we may discover wonderful new ways of self-expression we had never considered. And it is for no other reason than to encourage folk to take that first step that I created this change, the fashion report. The rules are simple. I shall assign you a theme, based upon which you are to attire yourself to the best of your sensibilities. I shall then judge you and award you a score. Participating is free, and there is a host of fabulous prizes to be won, courtesy of Mandeville and Mandeville. If you wish to know the finer points of the game, my lovely assistant Kazumi shall attend you. I look forward to giving you my unadulterated, brutally honest evaluation of your fashion sense. Steal yourself and let me know when you are ready to undertake the challenge. And we are about to take it now. As a matter of fact... The fashion report is now available. Speak with Mask the Rose in the Gold Saucer to undertake a fashion challenge. The realm's problems can wait until tomorrow. For today, we dress like heroes and heroines in Masked Rose's fashion report fashion changes. New changes are posted in the Gold Saucer every week. It's Earth time on Tuesday at 9am and are live for 3 days until Friday at 9am. No, we receive the challenge on Tuesday at 9am and you can undertake the challenge from Friday at 9am. Each challenge begins with themes given for 11 different equipment slots. Adventurers then choose from their wardrobe pieces of gear that they feel will complement the theme. Mask Throws will judge adventurers' attire and award a score from 1 to 100 based on their coordination skills. Adventurers are given 4 opportunities per challenge to have their attire judged. It is recommended that adventurers share insight with each other on how they fared to determine what combination of gear earned the highest score. MGP can be earned once per week for partaking in a fashion report, with bonus MGP being awarded to those with a score of 80 or more. So, as I said, there are a few things that are not quite exact here. We receive the challenge from Tuesday 9am. You can go talk to Masked Rose and see what the theme for the week is. And you can go before him to get judged from Friday 9 a.m. until the next Tuesday at 9 a.m. And it becomes 10 a.m. obviously once uh, we move to summertime. So here this is the challenge for the week. Called Elegant Impact. If you have no idea what to wear, 
it is fine it is understandable <laughs> um, but know that there are some people who help the community at large um, one of them is Meoni who makes videos on YouTube every week about the fashion challenge fashion report sorry um, another person is Kayoko who is also a streamer on Twitch and does um, a table with all the options that have been uncovered by other players. She posts that early on, usually on Friday, so at the beginning of the uh, weekly fashion report. So you can check with those sources and they will tell you what to wear in order to get at least 80 points or to get the full 100 points. You don't need to get all four correct to score even a hundred. And as a matter of fact, I, I won't try to get a hundred at all. And the reason why is this. Getting the max amount of points, a hundred, only earns you a title in the achievements and that's it. You will get the same amount of MGPs as reward as you would if you get 80 points. So unless I have all the gear on hand, I'm not going to bother. Uh, I'm only going to try and get the 80 points. And in order to get 80, you really only need one to two pieces of gear out of the four or more that are um, subject to the fashion report. Now, it is very important that all your slots, except for offhand, are full before you present yourself. Because if they are not, you are going to lose points. So that's the most important thing. So, I've checked what the requirements, well, the options uh, to complete the fashion report are this week. And from that, I've decided to put on the songbird hat, the Leonhardt jacket, and finally for the handpiece I will put on the Emperor's new gloves, which as you can see basically mean that you wear nothing, or at least nothing visible. And this is something you can often use. So as you saw earlier with the vendor, they have piece like that for every slot. So when you want to appear with your hands bare or any part of your attire empty or bare, you can use one of these pieces in a glamour to hide whatever pieces you want to. Typically the hands or some of the uh, accessories. Do you wish to know the current theme? No, I already do. I want to present myself for judgment. And by the way, contrary to what Masked Rose said, um, the attire that you have to wear in order to earn a lot of points don't necessarily look good. But sometimes they do. Sometimes they actually look really nice together. Sometimes they look awful. <laughs> Especially since, in addition, some dice can give you additional points. So the colors, however, don't have to match necessarily very well. I've made my decision, brace yourself. Hmm, 92. Yeah, because I'm, I'm missing the pants, so I cannot get a hundred. I could maybe with the dice, but I didn't want to go there. And as I said, your aim in order to earn a maximum amount of MGP is going to be 80, so that's more than enough. 
outstanding, seldom do I witness such a fine sense of fashion. Within others, at any rate, with the sensibilities you have cultivated, I have no doubt that you shall go far. And so we get our rewards. For participating, you get 10,000 MGPs, which is not too shabby. But then if you reach 80 or more, you get an extra 50,000. And that's really where the prize is. So again, don't bother with 100 unless you have all the pieces at hand, obviously. And if you haven't had the title yet, go for 80. That's your goal. And that's going to be a lot easier to achieve because again, you only need typically one piece and one or two dice or a couple of pieces. At this very early stage in the game, even that some weeks is going to prove impossible, but as you progress through the game, we'll have access to more and more pieces and you'll be able to uh, fulfill most of the slots much easier. Also showing off um, the achievements that we've unlocked, because there are a few available for fashion report. Probably missed that the first time around. But that's for the triple triad. Gates. Where is it? Oh, I saw them. Okay, so they're not under Gold Saucer for some reason, th uh, they are under General. As you can see, you need to reach 100 points uh, to unlock the Fashion Leader title. But there are achievements already for reaching 80 and for reaching 90. Since I had 92, I uh, unlocked those two in one go. Alright, and that's it for me here in the Gold Saucer. Let's head back to Ulda. Alright, before we conclude this video, there are just a few things I want to show you in relation to the various features we've unlocked today. First up, I'm going to show you where you can get clear prisms and glamour dispellers. They are to be found with that cellar which is close to the main etherite of any city-state. Here in Ulda it's Rorik. So those are the merchants in city-states you deliver tradecraft leaves items to. And they will sell some items including clear prisms, glamour dispellers and a number of other things that might be of interest. They also sell Giza greens and we'll need that in a few levels from now. A handful of minions as well as a handful of orchestrian rolls. The minions are going to be the same in the three city-states. The orchestrians though do change, at least for three of them. They are going to be the local music that you hear in the cities and outside in the surrounding areas. So those are easy to obtain minions and music from your orchestrians right there. And they are not terribly expensive either. I'm also going to show you at the markets. At each market you are going to find that one person who sells dyes.
which I probably missed. Oh no, it's the independent merchant here in Ulda. Because in the other cities it's called a Daimonger. Or die merchant. Now they don't have all the dice, they only have a small selection. As I said, um, you will only access quite a few of the dice later on. Some need to be crafted, others you will obtain from different sources. And the same merchant sells a different grade of dark matter. So I'm going to buy a few here to have enough on hand to do my uh, usual repairs. And now we can return to the Adventurers Guild and take an in room. And now I have a few things to show you around here too. Suddenly we have access to a lot of the features. So we already had access to the summoning bell. Now we also have access to the crystal bell to summon the esthetician. And as you can see, here are the things you can modify with the esthetician. Hairstyle, hair color, eyebrows, lip color, face, facial features, tattoos, tattoo color, face paint, and face paint color. So I'm not going to change anything here, but this was just to uh, show you what you can do with the esthetician, and again, uh, every time you use the esthetician, you will have to pay 2,000 gil. Unless you use the Gentleline token, obviously. Alright, now remember at the beginning I sent my retainer on a venture, which they have completed. So we can talk to the retainer to quote end quote here their report. So for that you go to view venture report and you receive whatever there have been an earthing for you. Here I got 60 um, lightning shards and they leveled up so now they are level 2 which will unlock new ventures for me to send them on in the botany category at least. In the botany category for every level you will have new ventures appearing. In the exploration category you will have new ventures every five levels. And you'll note that for the elegant snail I can't send Melina on that venture because I haven't gathered it myself yet. So you can only send a retainer to gather items you have already gathered yourself. We can also access the orchestrion because we have a role. So I'm going to use it. That's going to add the role to the orchestrion list. And now if I check the orchestrion and I go under dungeon, only display roles obtained, you can see that my role has been added and I can have the orchestrion play 
that specific music. So as you saw earlier, we can buy a number of orchestral roles from those vendors near the Esserites in the main cities, but you will see plenty of other places where you can obtain them either by buying them or by crafting them or by obtaining them uh, at random as I did here for this one. And now we can look at the armoire and the glamour dresser. Situated in your in-room estate and squadron barracks, the armoire can be used to store certain kinds of items with limited methods of obtainment. This includes job-specific gear, seasonal event, garb, and so forth. You can determine whether or not an item can be stored in the armoire by viewing its item help window. Please note that only items with condition at 100% or above can be stored. Furthermore, storing an item will reset its spirit bond and condition as well as remove customized elements such as dice or crests. And here you will automatically see what items can be stored in the armor. And the great thing about the armor is that technically the space is unlimited. You can s place there whatever you have uh, that falls within those categories that fit into the armor. For everything else, you can place them in the glamour dresser, although there is limited space. There are 800 slots in total. If you come across a piece of gear whose design tickles your fancy, you may be able to store it in a glamour dresser, where it will be instantly transformed into a glamour. This can be confirmed via the item's help window. Once stored in the glamour dresser, images of the gear can be applied to glamour plates and then equipped via the plates at your leisure. Note, however, that gear stored in a glamour dresser cannot be equipped until removed from the glamour dresser. Also, like the armoire, it will remove, uh, it will reset the spirit bond, remove any dye you may have applied to the item, and the item needs to be at a hundred percent condition or more. Now, I will show you uh, in another video how to use the glamour plates because I don't really need them for now. But we will get there eventually. But yeah, now we have a use for most of the items found in in room. So that's quite the progress. And this is how I am going to conclude this video. Okay, so today has been mostly about tying up loose ends and mopping up side quests here and there. Next video, well, the next two videos actually are going to be all about the MSQ, so you can look forward to that. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye bye.